we have now to move to our second speaker tonight. So the second speaker is Les Underhill. Uh, most of you know Les, so I won't introduce him very long. Uh, so today he will be talking about the ABC, which stands for the April Bulbul Challenge. And yeah, let's go for it. Right. So, um, so we, we, we thought um, we would do an April Bulbul Challenge, and I'll need to explain why. So there was this character at um, the Durban Museum, Walter Lawson, who, um, who says that there's only one species of uh, bulbul in, um, in Southern Africa, and that's the, uh, the Cape bulbul, um, um, Pycnonotus capensis. So I propose to show year under that the complex of Southern African Pycnonotus forms a single polytypic species. But uh, nobody uh, took much notice of, um, of him. And um, we now reckon that there are six bulbul species, Pycnonotus bulbul species in uh, Africa. And there's about 30 in total. Most of them are in um, Asia. But um, the, the taxonomy is, um, is really disputed. And there's uh, lots of, uh, of uh, new species being uh, created at the moment. And uh, yeah, Walter Lawson's uh, really gone out of uh, fashion. And um, there's one um, introduced species, uh, Mauritius, which is an African, one of the African islands, um, has a thing called the red whiskered bulbul. And it was introduced there in the uh, 1800s. It was also introduced on in the Seychelles, but it's been um, exterminated there introduced in various parts of the world and it's a um, and it's pest wherever it's been um, it's been introduced what to think of bulbuls as being pests but that's what the reality is so here's um, the the book of um, birds south of um, Africa south of the Sahara I apologize to the authors that I've not actually acknowledged it properly in the um, in, in this um, slide, and here are the six uh, bulbuls um, in Africa. So we're going to start and have a look at uh, at all of them. We start with number five, the Somali bulbul, and then we go around um, anti-clockwise. Um, we start with Dodson's bulbul, then we go around anti-clockwise. Next one is Somali bulbul, then the common bulbul, then um, Dark capped bulbul, African red eyed bulbul, and ending up with the, um, with the, the, the Cape, uh, Cape bulbul. So these are all very um, closely related species. And amazingly, there's a um, um, records, photographic records for every single one of them in the uh, virtual museum. Before we start that uh, tour, um, this is the, uh, the last serious work done on bulbuls in Southern Africa. It was done by Penn Lloyd at the uh, Rhodes University. He did it uh, for his MSc quite early in the 1990s. There's a, um, a chapter on the genetics and it has a, uh, a section on the taxonomic status. It doesn't actually cite Lawson's paper. So that's how much Lawson had fallen out of uh, favor already. And um, the, the, this analysis was, was quite small samples, but it found that the genetics of the three um, Southern African species were almost um, identical. And um, the section in the discussion on the taxonomic status says that um, Lawson was right, that if you uh, adopt as your definition of species, uh, a theory called the biological species concept, then there is only one species. But if you invoke a thing called the phylogenetic species concept, it, uh, it was okay to say three species and there's quite good justification and argument in favor of that. So I was quite amazed to find that we have uh, photos of every uh, species in, um, in, in bird pics. Peter Cronier, 
um, was doing a training in Somalia, training in, in uh, police methods. And he lived in the, uh, in the camp in the green zone alongside Mogadishu International Airport. He really got into trouble taking pictures of birds sitting on the, um, on the perimeter fence of the, uh, of the green zone. Nine records in total, um, Kenya, Somalia, Ethiopia. And then there's the um, Somali bulbul, which has just got a few little whitish feathers on its neck. The arrow points at them. And um, this is taken in Ethiopia. It's the, um, the only record of the species in the virtual museum. This is the uh, common bulbul across um, the, the northern part of uh, Africa, sort of mostly south of the Sahara from, um, from uh, Ethiopia, westwards all the way to the uh, coast. And, um, and this photo was uh, by Mohammed Saleh, taken in uh, Khartoum, and uh, just taken on the banks of the Blue Nile. And so uh, if you live in Khartoum, then you have to make the distinction between the Blue Nile and the White Nile because they, the, the confluence of the two Niles is um, in, in Khartoum. Um, dark capped bulbul. So this is um, to, a little bit to the, to the south of um, sort of Central Africa through um, uh, Kenya, comes down all the way to the Eastern Cape in South Africa. And, um, and this photo was taken by Pam Kleiman in uh, Namibia in the, um, in, the, in the Caprivi Strip. So this was on the, um, the river that runs into the um, Okavango swamps. So this one's got a, um, a yellow um, um, underparts under the tail. And this is the um, African red-eyed bulbul. Also a photo from uh, Namibia taken by uh, Leah Steen. And um, there are 425 records of this in bird pics. The previous one, dark cap bulbul, 971 records and the numbers of the previous species were quite small. And finally, and, and this is the only picture in this series from, uh, from South Africa, and the photo has to be from South Africa because it's uh, endemic largely to the, um, to the winter rainfall area. And this is the uh, Cape Bulbul, 498 records with the, um, with the very distinct shape to the, um, to the white eye. So the, the, the white um, thing around the eye is, is longer on the side of the beak than it is on the side of the back of the head. And here's the red whiskered bulbul. Um, quite an attractive bird. I wouldn't mind having one of those in my garden. Um, and this is this invasive uh, alien species in uh, Mauritius, where it is a, um, a, real, um, a real pest. Nine records, all from Mauritius. And this is probably the picture that, um, that, that triggered uh, my, my interest in, uh, in bulbul. I got home from a um, bird picks trip. And, um, and I had this uh, funny picture of a, um, of a bulbul in an area where, uh, where, the, where the anticipated bulbul was, uh, was the Cape bulbul. And you can see that um, Liesel van Deventer has dealt with this bird, with this record at uh, two minutes to six o'clock on the 29th of March, that was yesterday. So this uh, record is, uh, is hardly a day old. And she says, my take is a hy hybrid Cape Bulbul, pink eyes, shape of bare skin resembles Cape Bulbul with the larger end towards the bull. The black mask is more typical of the Cape Bulbul. Red eyed Bulbul has a, um, a dark head. So, she reckons that this is a hybrid between the, um, the two species. And the, um, that little red flag is, uh, is exactly 
at the at the end of the, the range of the red-eyed bulbul that comes from the um, from the interior and the Cape bulbul, which is uh, along the uh, along the coast. And then twenty or quite a long time ago, five six years ago, this um, photograph was submitted to uh, BirdPix and. Um, the two people who comment on it, Colin Summers, Summers Gill, the, the um, observer said it was a cape rubble, and he says, I'm not convinced that this is a cape. The eye ring looks almost pink and um, carries on. And Liesel um, says this is um, in the Gatto Elephant Park. All three bulbuls occur um, in and around the, uh, the park. So this is the place. Where, the, uh, where you expect to get the um, hybrids. And um, Liesel took the decision that this was a, um, a hybrid of, between red-eyed bulbul and dark-capped bulbul. And we don't have um, any photos of the, the next possibility of, uh, of hybrids. <clears throat> so these texts are extremely uh, compressed and short. But even here, the, um, the, the, the authors of the Birds of Africa, South of the Sahara, had the, uh, had the space to say the species hybridizes or they integrate, or there's a hybrid zone. So um, um, hybridization is a, uh, is a big thing of, um, for the, uh, the bulbuls. So in that same paper by uh, Walter Lawson, there's this uh, picture which has all these specimens laid out in rows. Um, this is what museum taxonomists do. You can't quite do this as well with photographs, laying them out in neat rows, but at least <clears throat> the colors of the beaks and the legs don't slowly fade as they do in museum specimens. So good photos can be, um, can be really useful to do this kind of, um, kind of analysis of putting uh, photographs together, comparing the, um, comparing the species. So that's the ABC, the April Bulbul Challenge. So what we want you to do is to take lots of photos of the uh, Pitna Notus Bulbuls wherever you are in Africa during April and upload them to the bird pick section. So <clears throat> the Bird Atlas project is based on, um, on site records. And so if there's a query, you can't really go back and double check on what, what you recorded. So, um, so that's the advantage of a, um, of a photographic system is that not every photo is gonna be deliver the goods. But, um, but like that, um, that funny hybrid that I got at uh, Trace Refere between the Cape Rubble and the Red-Eyed Rubble, often it's only when you get home and look at the photos that you see that you've um, found something uh, funny. So what, what we are able to do is confirm the ranges of the species, even in places where, where traditionally only one species occurs. It's good to confirm and have photographic, a photographic record that confirms it. We can help find the zones of hybridization. Like I found the zone of hybridization between the Cape and the Red Eye Bulbul. We can also find the zones where distributions overlap, but there is no interbreeding. And, and all this um, can help guide the researchers of the future, future as to where they should do their um, genetic um, sampling. So if we are successful in April, we can, can continue with the uh, ABC. And we just rename it and call it the African Bulbul Challenge. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Les. Thank you very much for your talk. That was great. And I think with your, hopefully we can encourage everyone here and everyone that will listen to the talk to go out and uh, photograph bulbuls all over Africa and to meet them to the virtual museum. So we can understand a little, a little bit more about the distribution of, of the bulbuls in Africa. So yeah, thank you very much for that. 
And well, there are some questions. So this one by George saying, have there been any attempts to exam exam examine the genetic situation of the museum species? Yeah, so, um, so I, I chatted to Adrian Craig, who was uh, Penn Lloyd's supervisor. And, um, and he says, this is a, uh, an, an opportunity waiting to happen. So, um, so nobody has done any genetic work on bulbuls, as far as I'm aware, since Penn Lloyd did his in the mid to early 1990s. So, um, so there's a lot been done since then, a lot of understanding. So yes, there's a wonderful project uh, lurking there for uh, somebody. So yeah, I guess I like, I really like the African bulbul challenge. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully this is, <laughs> hopefully we can rename it if this is successful. <laughs> 